Welcome to part two of this series on security awareness. Part one covered physical security to protect your workplace, and this part two introduces the concepts of basic information security. Information is protected through system policies controlling security and external procedures for confidentiality, integrity, availability, and accountability. At the end of this session, you will understand concepts in personal responsibility and accountability. Other concepts covered are controlled access to systems, least privilege to system rights, and levels of protection. We will also cover the authorized use of a system and unlawful and unacceptable conduct. Finally, you will also understand the expectation of privacy at work and how to report threats and other incidents. When you use an information system at work, you are responsible for maintaining confidentiality, integrity, availability, and accountability. Confidentiality measures ensure information is not made available or disclosed to unauthorized individuals, entities, or processes. Integrity is the required level of accuracy, completeness, and dependability of the programs, services, and information being handled by the information system or its assets. Availability is the required level of responsiveness of programs, services, and information being provided by the information system to support its stated mission. And accountability ensures that the actions of an entity may be traced uniquely to that entity. Confidentiality is controlled by access measures provided by an information system. The concept is that information is not made available or disclosed to unauthorized individuals, entities, or processes. Ideally, if you do not have access to information, you should not be able to see it. Integrity is the required level of accuracy, completeness, and dependability of the programs, services, and information being handled by the information system or its assets. Availability is the required level of responsiveness of programs, services, and information being provided by the information system to support the stated mission. It covers uptime, the response time online, and business continuity from an outage or data loss. The availability is usually specified in a service level agreement. Controlled access is the principle that a person or any system component should be granted access only to that information for which appropriate access authorization and an established need to know are approved. You should be granted access only to those resources necessary to perform the assigned task. Controlled access is normally achieved through a combination of technical, physical, and procedural means. Physical security, covered in part one of this series, is the first layer ensuring that only authorized people have physical access to a system and its networks. Least privilege is the principle that a person or system component is given the least access necessary to do a task. Access privileges granted to a user usually consist of read, delete, modify, or append information. Information systems should have several levels of protection. The level of protection should be commensurate with the security levels of the information and assets involved. The protection must also take into consideration the identified vulnerabilities and threats to the information system. Threats will be discussed in another module. Information should be protected by redundant protective features to safeguard information assets. Protection features such as standard operating procedures and information backups must be exercised and tested. Backups should be stored at an off-site location. 
Authorized network use means that people should only access and use information systems, including assets, to perform functions related to their duties. Users should not process, store, or communicate private information or conduct personal affairs or business on any corporate information system asset. Corporate assets should only be used for corporate purposes. Anyone having direct or indirect access to an information system should be held individually accountable for their actions on the system. Pornographic, lewd, racist, sexist, or any other materials which are contrary to laws and or corporate policies and regulations should not be introduced into any information system. If such activity or negligence is discovered or suspected, it should be reported to the Information Systems Security Officer who will initiate appropriate investigations. Any suspected illegal activity should be reported to the police. You should have no expectation of privacy on corporate information systems. Information systems and assets should only be accessed and used to perform authorized tasks. You should be aware that authorized personnel usually monitor activity on information systems. There is no assumption of privacy, including during personal use. Therefore, you should be aware that internet banking or any other personal use is not excluded from monitoring. You should report any incident that violates information system security policy so it can be investigated, reported, and corrective action taken. All incidents should be reported to the Information Systems Security Officer. There should be formal investigations of malicious code and virus incidents that indicate possible criminal act, security breach, and foreign intelligence, terrorist, or extremist involvement. Check out the other tutorials in this series to help you learn more about a broad range of information security issues. The more you know, the better you will know how to protect corporate and personal information. Hello again, this is the end of part two on security awareness and information security. Please review the additional modules for more detailed information on specific topics. If you have any feedback or questions, please send me an email.